Jarvis Tanner grows some strange kind of nettle on his country farm and uses plant steroids to promote growth. However, his equipment is old, it leaks in some places, and the steroid liquid spreads out of his farmhouse right onto a tick larva. Tyler has a slight mental issue. He's afraid of the woods. When he was a kid, his father left him in the woods, and it took him a long time to get back out. Now it has turned into a phobia that has to be dealt with. So his father sends him to a special country camp with similarly troubled kids. The leaders of this group, Holly and Charles, regularly gather the teenagers and take them to nature to forget about their problems for a while. Tyler arrived at the gathering place and met Daryl there. He looked like a thug and acted accordingly. I've killed about as many dudes as you bone chicks. You make the call. But when Holly pulled up, it turned out that Daryl and his dog Brutus were going with them. Charles's daughter Melissa, Hernandez and her girlfriend Dee Dee, and Kelly, who barely speaks, are also joining them on a ride. Meanwhile, Jarvis noticed a leak, but it was too late. The tick larva, which had been hit with steroids, had already grown and was preparing to hatch. Holly and Charles stopped on their way, and then Daryl noticed some kind of rash on Brutus. Tyler looked at him and realized that he had ticks crawling all over him. He took one off and set it on fire. The next stop was at the convenience store where the guys replenished their supplies. Melissa was spotted by a local named Jerry, who started harassing her. Yet he was silenced by an acquaintance, as he reminded him of good manners. Jarvis didn't like uninvited guests on his farm, so he set a trap and then saw that his hamster had been eaten by some creature. He noticed movement, looked in that direction, and then something jumped at him, making him retreat. Jarvis got caught in his own trap, fell, and saw dozens of cocoons on the ceiling, in which ticks about the size of the palm of his hand were growing. When the boys arrived at the country camp and checked into their cabin, Tyler found a similar cocoon in the closet. He crushed it, and tick larvae spilled onto the floor. And it wasn't the only cocoon, the same one was hiding behind the wall. When Tyler and Melissa went for a walk, they stumbled upon another cocoon. It clung to Melissa's back, and Tyler had trouble removing it. A tick begins to hatch from the cocoon, and it is hungry. When Tyler drops it, the insect snatches the stick from him and runs away. When they returned to camp, they explained everything to the adults, but they didn't believe them. Charles and Holly were just organizing a little picnic outdoors. At that moment, Jerry and his buddy, who asked to be called Sir, came to them. They warned Charles that there might be forbidden farmers nearby, and it would be better not to mess with them. Indeed, Jarvis, who had been attacked by mutant ticks, was not to be dealt with. The insects crawled under his skin and moved there as if they were at home. Jarvis found his revolver and tried to shoot them, but failed. At night, when Charles and Holly went to bed, the boys decided to start a fire with gasoline. It didn't work out very well, and Charlie adjourned the company. Daryl lost Brutus and went looking for him. Tyler volunteered to help him. Brutus, meanwhile, was preparing to become food for a tick. The insect attacked him and drank all his blood. Daryl found Brutus in a terrible state, growling and kicking, and soon he died. Daryl was utterly upset. He gathered his belongings and walked to town, from where he was going to hitch a ride home. The next day, cocoons of mutant ticks appeared all over the forest. They were also on the trees growing near the camp. In the morning, the sheriff arrived at the camper's house. He examined Brutus's body and advised that he be taken to town by a veterinarian. Dr. Cage will tell him what happened to the dog. After learning that Daryl had escaped, Charles decided to go to the vet and look for the runaway on the way. He took Tyler with him. As they drove through the woods, Daryl spotted them. He was hiding nearby. Shit, don't look too hard for me. Brutus was taken to the vet, and as Dr. Cage was trying to take a sample of the fluid that had filled the interior, a tick burst out of the animal. It escaped and attacked Tyler. It was barely possible to unhook it, and then Dr. Cage finished off the bug. She studied what was left of it and came to the conclusion that this tick was capable of killing a person. Its venom contains a toxin that causes hallucinations. When Daryl set off again, one of the mutant ticks clung to his leg. Meanwhile, his friends were vacationing in the countryside. Holly sent Melissa and Kelly fishing, and when the girls cast their rods, the fish nibbled right away. Hey, hey, you got a bite, you got a bite! Reel it in, reel it in! Yet they couldn't get it out. So Kelly sent Melissa into the water with a net, only to find the sheriff dead. Next to it was his car with gunshot residue. Sir and Jerry did it. They finished off the sheriff and dumped his body in the pond. While Melissa and Kelly were fishing, Hernandez and Dee Dee walked through the woods. They came out to Jarvis's little house, and Dee Dee found the owner inside. She went inside, found cocoons of ticks, and then a disfigured Jarvis showed up. He begged to kill him, but Dee Dee couldn't do it. Then Jarvis fell on top of her, and a tick burst out of his throbbing cheek and clawed at the girl. Dee Dee ran outside in a panic, where Hernandez was waiting for her. After the bite, Daryl began to hallucinate. He had no idea where he was going and ran into Jerry and his buddy. 
They mistook him for one of the pot dealers and decided to kill him. Yet Daryl managed to escape. He stuck a knife in Jerry's leg and tried to run away, but Sir shot him the second time. When he shot the first time, he hit the gas cylinder and fire erupted from it. Sir decided Daryl was dead, so he left him there. But the kid stole steroids from Hernandez and swallowed them so he wouldn't turn up his toes. Meanwhile, Hernandez found the girlfriend and carried her to camp. She thought she saw Jarvis in front of her, so she started fighting back. At that moment, Charles and Tyler returning from town spotted them. They gave the guys a ride and provided first aid to Dee Dee. A shot canister caused a fire, and the fire drove the mutant ticks toward the camp where the guys were resting. So when Charles brought Tyler and Hernandez with Dee Dee, Jerry and Sir came running after them. They brought insects with them, which they had to squeeze to keep them from attacking. Jerry was all bitten up, and his buddy suggested that everyone get out in Charles's car. He sent Jerry outside to drive the car up. At that moment, Daryl appeared outside. He asked to be let in, but Sir prohibited them from opening the door. Despite this, Tyler did let his friend in. Daryl was wounded and bitten, but he managed to point to Sir and Jerry, making it clear that they were trying to kill him. After that, he died. There was no point in hiding any further, and Sir began openly threatening Holly and the others with guns, demanding the keys to the car. He even shot Charles, who tried to stand up for Hernandez. The keys to the van, Cebu play. After taking the keys, Sir sends Jerry to pull up the car. He makes his way through hordes of ticks to the car but is bitten and begins to hallucinate. He sees the sheriff's corpse and rams the car into him, but it turns out to be Sir. This rascal survived even after the car hit him. He grabs Melissa and pulls a revolver on her, but Tyler stands up for her. Sir was disarmed, and Hernandez also wounded him. At this point, Daryl began to shudder in convulsions, and Holly led the children upstairs. A giant tick burst out of Daryl and attacked Sir. Then he went to the second floor to deal with the rest of the humans. Tyler climbed out the window to pull the car up, but the rope he was descending on snapped and he fell to the ground, where dozens of ticks were crawling. A broomstick happened to be nearby. Tyler grabbed it, set it on fire, and fought off the insects. That's how he made it to the car and was able to rescue his friends. The wounded Charles, Holly, and the others climbed out the window. Only Hernandez remained inside. He had been captured by a tick that had hatched from Daryl. Tyler had to use the broom and fire again to drive the monster away. Hernandez escaped, and Tyler shoved a burning broomstick into the tick's mouth. The fire caused the monster to explode and blow up the entire second floor. The fire had reached the fuel tank, and now the whole house was up in flames. By then, Tyler and the others were far away. They had left this forest full of mutant insects. Soon after, their lives returned to normal. The car had to be scrapped, and while it was parked there, a cocoon of ticks fell out of it. It began to move, ready to hatch. This means that the overgrown insects made it to the city, where there is a lot of delicious and healthy food for them. And that's where the movie ends. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to watch more movie recaps videos like this.